In this video, I'm gonna do a quick recap of the electrical of what we've done with the food truck. Uh, welcome to the DIY series, how to build your food truck. And I wasn't gonna work on the food truck today uh, on this new seven by 16 trailer that we're building out to be a mobile kitchen on wheels. But uh, I was like, let's finish up the outlets and switches before it gets dark. It is cold today, like super cold. And uh, we're like, might as well, let's, let's see if we can get some production done. And it seems like the electrical has been a big question. I get comments and I get messages from people saying, how do you hook up the outlets? What kind of generator should we use? Great questions. I've been doing electrical for a long time since I was in high school. And I wanted to do a quick recap just so you guys can see. Just so you guys can see how I'm wiring up these switches and outlets that power up these lights. You can't even see them right there, these lights. And then there's gonna power up these switches all right here that power up your food warmers, anything that you put in here that's electrical. And I wanna show you guys how so here what I did is from my electrical panel right there, I ran a line, a Romex line directly to the outlet right here. We call it a home run. And what I did is I took the black wire, which is one of my constant powers. We call it constant power neutral ground. And I connected it directly onto uh, every time you have an outlet. And here you see how one is a little bit bigger than the other. The smaller one is always gonna be your hot your hot side, or if you look on here, the gold screw. And on the other side, you're gonna have one that's a little bit more silver, that's always gonna be your neutral. So what I did is I took the constant power, in this case, it's the black wire, and I connected it directly here. And if you see directly on an outlet right there, it has a jumper from one terminal to the other that lets both screws be connected. You can take that tab out Typically you don't. So on here what I did is I took a jumper cable from this terminal and I jumped it to the other outlet right there. And that way they're both fed from the same breaker. Same thing I did here with the neutral or the white wire. You take it from the Romex and then you connect it to your outlet. And then because of that jumper that's on the top right there, it lets it get connected to the other outlet right there. That's how you get two outlets to be connected on the same circuit. You jump them. We call it a jumper cable. So you take your home run, you connect it to one side, bam, bam, and then you jump it to the other outlet, and then you don't forget about your ground. And then what you do is you give it a courtesy wrap. A courtesy wrap, you tape it around with the black electrical tape. You tape around the outlets. That way when they take out the outlet, it doesn't give them a shock. And this right here is how the outlet will look when you do the courtesy wrap on there. We call it the courtesy wrap just because when you're putting this back in the box, these terminals can touch the metal and that's when you cause sparks and possibly trip your breaker. So you wanna make sure that you give it a little tape around, a little courtesy wrap right there, again, as we call it. and. Uh, that's how you do it. And then you take your screw gun and then you screw these right in. And then you put your wall plate right on there. And then you test it out. We're gonna bring out the tester. We're gonna test it out, make sure that they're working properly. So then what we're gonna do is turn on our breaker. And then we have this electrical tester. And this thing, if both of them are lit up right there on the two on the right, that means it's correct and it's plugged in properly. It's grounded properly. So let's see how we're at. So there it is. We have our two lights there and there. And that means that the outlets are connected properly. One thing that I do want to mention that you buy, oh man, let me flip the camera over again, is you buy tamper resistant outlets. Tamper. It's right there. Decora tamper resistant outlets. And that's how they are. I use 15 amp outlets here because that's uh, enough usage, enough voltage for what we need. It's enough of an amperage for what we need. The 15 amps is enough amperage for what we need for our use. Um, haven't had any issues whatsoever. And I run a full kitchen where we make breakfast burritos. So that's how you install outlets. Now let's move on to these switches right here. Show you guys how we do those right there.
So I'm trying to do some hyperlapse in there so you guys won't get bored of just a bunch of screwing and stripping the wires and skinning them back and then twisting them into place with the strippers here. Um, so this is what we did here. So we took the constant power, which comes from the home run, and then this other one runs to my exhaust fan, which is going to be right there. That controls, that's going to be a knob that controls the exhaust fan right there. That is the constant power. Again, there's a recap. I already did a, a video explaining the electrical. I just wanted to uh, do it one more time. Maybe uh, it gets better clarification here. So this is a home run. This is the other constant power. And then this one's the one that's going to go to my switch right there. And then again, it gets pigtailed and it comes to the outlet right there. This one right here, this other wire down here, that one goes down. And that's going to be my fridge outlet for my prep fridge. I like to have it on a switch so when you flick this switch on that is going to power on that outlet and I like that because just in case the fridge goes bad or it has started to make a noise or something you just never know you can have instant access to just powering that off and then these red cables are here as spares I could have gone with a smaller cable like a 14-2 I decided not to because I have seen wires go bad and I like to have extras just in case maybe that's just the electrician in me but i like these just in case cables but you can do it without if you so desire so that's kind of the cap of that and then we're just going to screw these right in and if i did my wiring correctly we should turn on these breakers right here i think it's the top one right there and then when i flick the switch on i'm going to put the tester right here so you guys know i'm not cheating this should not have any power there it is and then when i turn on that there it is. Let's go back. We have our two lights on there. That means it's correctly wired and it's grounded. So that is how you get a switch outlet right there. And that's going to be for the fridge on and off. There it is. On, off. Nice. We got a couple more to do. And that right there is how the final product should look. You got your nice cover on there. Nobody knows how the wiring is back there or how you mumble jumble it back in there. You will be surprised at some of the wiring that we find. Woo, it's like a bird nest in some of these commercial projects or residential projects that we find. Some of it's that old wiring, the cloth wiring that they used to use a long time ago that just breaks right when you touch it. Um, so with that, in the next weeks coming up, we're gonna start touching base on the plumbing on the propane or the gas lines. That to me was one of the hardest parts of the project when I did my first food truck was when I had to learn, I had to literally learn how to do plumbing and the gas lines. But now that I've done it once, um, I feel like I can, I feel like it's very duplicatable that we can teach it one more time because uh, it is not as hard or difficult as it seems once you get the hang of it it's like bam 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 so i'm going to walk you guys step by step on how to do that hopefully the electrical this was the second video that i've done on switches and outlets uh, because i wanted to see maybe there's a clarification that i missed and maybe this video will cover it so with that we are going to finish up just a little spot right up there on the stainless steel that i have and uh then we're going to start on the plumbing the electrical and the flooring right there so frank both here is with the diy series how to build your food truck the electrical the switches is done. It's cold out, so let's go.